Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Jess and today My intro kept getting interrupted, but as you can see from the title, this is the easy method of sewing a sequin dress. This is not the couture method where you would remove the sequins from the seam line before sewing. This is the easy way of just sewing through the sequins with safety goggles on. This fabric was gifted to me by Zilu Fabrics. This video is not sponsored, I just was inspired to film. The base of the sequence fabric is a two-way stretch power mesh. The power mesh has been dip dyed to get the ombre of colors and then over top the sequins are chain stitched on. For the supplies, grab an old pair of shears that have been sharpened. Cutting through sequins will dull your good scissors. I have a scrap of fabric to test out stitches and tension. You'll also need sewing needles that match the base fabric. With the power mesh, I'll be using Ballpoint 8011. And most importantly, safety goggles. The needles sewing through the bulk of the fabric can break off like shrapnel. Just be safe. For thread, I'm using Guterman's all-purpose polyester thread in the color 323. It's a kind of mauve pink. For the pattern, I'm using a slightly modified CC Cami bodycon dress pattern. I picked it up on Etsy. I altered the top of the bodice by shaping it like a tube top instead of a cami. It took some time planning out the layout of the dress, but once I got that going, I used the pattern weights, aka just some rocks and crystals, to hold down the pattern while I cut it out. The gift that keeps on giving, you will be finding sequins for years to come. Here's my scrap of fabric I've tested some stitches on. There's no stretch along the vertical of the fabric, but it stretches along the horizontal seams. For the horizontal seams, like the waistline and the top of the bodice, I'm using a zigzag stitch. And along the vertical seams, I've tested the straight stitch at the top and a zigzag towards the bottom. I should have used a different thread so you could actually see the difference, but I liked the way the straight stitch seams pressed open. And when I pulled on the zigzag seams, you could see the threads through the front. So I'll be using a straight stitch on my vertical seams, like the side seams, but if you're kind of like, thanks, I hate it, just stick with the zigzag stitch for the power mesh base. Also, I wouldn't use my serger on sequins fabric unless all the sequins had been removed from the seam lines. I was excited to line up the ombre dip dye of the skirt, so first I'm matching the front of the skirt right sides together with the back pieces of the skirt. I'll be using clips to hold the side seams together. Also, I'm only sewing the side seams at this point. Once the bodice is attached, the back seam will be sewn. Back stitching at the beginning and end, this is the part of the sewing where I will be wearing safety goggles. If you see sequin fabric, safety goggles are on. I am using a straight stitch for the side seams. For the seam allowance, the pattern uses 3 8 but this fabric has enough stretch that I ended up increasing the side seam allowance to 5 8 After I finish sewing both side seams, I do trim the seam allowance back down to about 3 8 so there's less bulk on the sides. Working from the back side of the fabric, I'm pressing my side seams with my iron on the lowest heat setting. I genuinely enjoy ironing, but with sequin fabric, as you can probably guess, you want to press from the back side of the fabric, avoiding ironing the sequins themselves. Also, high heat or steam can potentially warp or melt your sequins. If you have a seam roller, that would be a great way to press the seams. I am using my hands to press open the side seams from the front and back so everything lays smoothly. This is the front bodice piece. 
Working from the back side of the fabric, I'm using pins to mark the dark points and then Clover Brand sewing chalk to make a temporary marking of the dart on the fabric. I mark the two points of the dart by the side seam and then the tip of the dart. Once those points are marked, I'm using a ruler to finish the dart line. After the dart has been transferred to the back side of the fabric, I'm pinning the fabric right sides together along that line. This is just a personal preference, but since the fabric has stretched along the dart line, I am hand basting that seam before I stitch it on my machine. I have a knot in the beginning of the stitch and I tie one in at the end to hold the dart in in place. To sew the dart on my machine, I'll be using a tiny zigzag stitch with a width of 0.5 and a length of 3. This tiny zigzag stitch I'm using, it locks the thread in the beginning with 3 stitches, but if you're using something like a straight stitch, you'll want a back stitch at the beginning of the dart. As you can see, I did end up putting the pins back along the dart line I hand basted. I liked how they held the fabric in line while sewing. Once we get to the tip of the dart and we sew off that point, leave a length of thread from the needle and bobbin so the tip of the dart can be hand knotted. This is a secure way of finishing off your dart tip. With my iron on the lowest heat setting, I'm pressing the dart seam. Be careful not to press over the dart point or you can iron a crease into your bodice. I've accidentally done it to myself before. Since this is a knit fabric that doesn't unravel, you could trim off the excess dart seam. But I didn't want to do that so I just pressed my dart down and left it as is. After the darts are in the front of the bodice, I'm taking the back bodice panels and matching those pieces right sides together along the side seam. Like the skirt, I'm using sewing clips to hold everything in place while I sew. I do have my safety goggles on and back stitching at the beginning and end, I sew both side seams of the bodice with a straight stitch. Like the skirt, I sewed the seam allowance of the bodice at 5 8 so I'm going to cut that down to about 3 8 and then I'll be pressing the side seams to the back of the bodice. Now we are ready to sew the waist seam and get this really looking like a dress. With the skirt facing right side up, we're going to place the bodice right side together, matching up the side seams and pinning along the waistline. For 
For the waist seam, one of the horizontal seams, I'm using the zigzag stitch to allow for the stretch in the fabric and in the dress design. For any areas of bulk like the side seams, I lift up the presser foot to help ease under the fabric. If I had a walking foot, I would have liked to try that out to see how that would have worked with the fabric too. The pattern uses a 3 8 seam allowance for the waist and I kept that measurement the same too. I didn't trim down the waist seam allowance, I just pressed that up towards the bodice. Since the main fabric of the dress is sheer, being a power mesh and all, I opted to add a liner. I'm using an ITY jersey knit fabric in the color Blossom Bliss, also gifted to me from Zilu Fabrics. But before I can add the lining to the dress, I'll be sewing up the back seam here and also adding shoulder straps. This dress design does have a back slit. I'll be sewing the back seam allowance at 5 8 with a straight stitch stopping about 12 inches from the hem of the skirt for that back slit. The pattern for this dress calls for straps made from the same fabric of the dress, but that obviously wasn't going to work with the sequin fabric, so I'm using bra strap elastic. This is 3 8 satin face plush back elastic. I used Ritz synthetic dye in apricot orange to get this fun color. It ended up a little darker than I was going for, but I love the way it turned out. With the shoulder straps, I did a lot of basting to figure out about how long and where I wanted them. I dyed a little longer of strap elastic than I would need just in case, but once I figured out about how long and where I wanted the straps on the dress, I sewed those down with a narrow zigzag stitch so they were secured in. With the shoulder straps sewn in, I'm going back to the lining of the dress. The lining of the dress is flipped inside out so that the front of the lining and the front of the sequin dress are right sides together. All along the top of the bodice, I will be pinning the lining and the main dress together, matching up the side seams as I go. To sew the lining and the main dress together, I'm using a zigzag stitch to allow for stretch and a 3 8 seam allowance. Once those two pieces are sewn together, we will be able to flip the lining of the dress to the right side and then slip that to the inside of the main dress. As you can probably guess, I will be pressing that seam line. After I pressed the dress, I was tempted to understitch the lining, which maybe you'll want to do, but I didn't find the lining rolled up on me too bad when I tried it on. Here's how the dress looks on the dress form so far. It was hard to pull on the dress form, so don't mind the bunching of the lining right here. So there's a couple different ways to hem sequin fabric. One method could involve slip stitching the main fabric to the lining, but since I'm working with a power mesh, I decided to go for a hem band. Here I am measuring the approximate length of my skirt. 
For the hem band, I will be using the soft jersey knit fabric I used for the lining of the dress. This hem band will be folded over for a clean finish, so to calculate out the total width of my band, I'm using my seam allowance plus the width of my band doubled. So my seam allowance is 3 8 and my band is 1 inch. Doubling this amount for the fold brings us to 2 and 3 fourths inches for the width of the band. The length is cut about 30 inches. I'm pressing the hem band wrong sides together with the right sides facing out. Once the hem band is pressed in half, we are going to place the band right side together against the hem of the dress. The raw edges of the band are pinned with the raw hem of the skirt. This seam line will be sewn together with a zigzag stitch. After sewing the hem band on with a zigzag stitch, I'm trimming down the seam allowance. The jersey band will be flipped to the wrong side of the dress with an overhang of sequin fabric so you can't see the band. The top of the band will be sewn with a zigzag stitch holding everything in place. First, I'm going to press the seam line of the band so it lays flat. Flipping the band to the wrong side of the skirt, I'm leaving an overhang of a fat 1 8 of an inch, but you could increase that amount if you want. I am pinning the band from the right side of the dress because I do plan on sewing the hem from the right side of the dress. I will be finishing off that hem with a zigzag stitch. I press the hem one last time so all the layers stay flat. To finish up the back slit of the skirt, I'm going to fold the hem under and sew it down with a straight stitch. Alright, here's what the dress looks like finished. I have clips of it on next. Uh, with me wearing the dress, the lighting goes from kind of bright to dark. It was hard to find the right lighting to film the sequin dress on. Anyways, thank you for watching and my intention is you learned something new or just enjoyed it. Love you guys and take care.